I was uh, a research analyst, so I studied the corn, beans, and wheat markets and um, provided advice on on those uh, those markets to uh, Canadian uh, farmers, um, and then got into kind of more uh, sales. Let's talk about the power of hemp. From the farm field to finished goods, learn all about it at the 2022 Midwest IHEMP Expo, May 20th through 21st at the Lansing Center. Visit MidwestIHEMPExpo.com. See you there. All right. Welcome to the IHEMP Hour. My name is Dave Craybill. I'm with IHEMP Michigan. IHEMP Michigan's mission is to educate, inform, and promote the research, development, and cultivation of industrial hemp. So we're... Uh, joined today with by, with Mike Lotti out of Canada. Welcome, Mike. And my normal normal partner uh, here, Blaine Bechtel, but we're missing Mike Brennan. He's off on assignment. Yeah, I guess we're not going to hear too much from the dark side today. No. Although I got a little bit that I'll report on a little later on that. It's kind of amazing. A little report came out about where, uh, where hemp sales are uh, in oh, the world, yeah. so... Or I should say not hemp, but to the cannabis side. So I'll bring that out a little later today. So for sure. <laughs> and uh, we want to let everybody know uh, about the Midwest IHEMP Expo coming up uh, in May. So we'll talk a little bit about that. It's going to be a great, we got a great lineup of speakers. Uh, great, uh, some great exhibitors going to be there. And then, of course, we have the Hempies uh, party on Friday night. So looking forward oh, to that. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Very yeah. cool. Can't wait to get our, our, our uh, batteries recharged. Absolutely. And, and hey, I, Blaine, I just want to throw a quick PSA out there, public service announcement. Yeah. So if you hear a grumbling, it's my stomach, you know, because I'm fasting <laughs> today. I'm, I've got a colonoscopy tomorrow because, you know, as many of you know, I've just, I'm, at, I'm at the tail end, pun intended, of my uh, colon cancer treatment. You know, I went through the colon rectal surgery with the help of CBD zero opioids. And a uh, shout out to Michael Tui for helping with the RSO oil. So, you know, uh, thanks to my cannabis buddies, uh, we're getting through this. And uh, so, boys, if you're at the age, get your colonoscopy. I'm talking to you, Mark. So uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess around with that. You don't want to go through this whole colon cancer thing. So that's my yeah. PSA for the day. Yeah, so, well, it's good you're on the men then. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. Um uh, so, Blaine, you want to do the introductions? Well, I can. Uh, we got Mark from uh, UniSeeds going to be with us today here. Um, they have a, they're a Canada-based company with genetics and been doing a lot of good work with uh, seeds up there. He's going to help us uh, learn a little bit about what seeds are going to be good to grow in, in our latitudes here and kind of in the northern part a little bit. And uh, Mark... Um, we're, we're a pleasure to have you here today. I know you're going to give us a wealth of information, uh, as we always have on the show. So we're looking forward to that. I hope I haven't boosted you up too much there, made you put it on a pedestal. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, Pressure's on. Yeah. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about, it's always interesting to hear um, how people get into and get involved in the hemp industry and how Uni Seeds got into all this. Yeah, well, it's... Uh... It's, it's an interesting story and uh, um, myself, I'm, I'm, I'm what everybody considers a newbie in the industry. I, I'm, I'm in it for about a year and a half now. Uh, learning curve is huge and still learning every day. And uh, yeah, but what's, what's kind of interesting is um, in Canada, it was legalized in 98. And I grew up in a very rural, small community and in uh, just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. And, um, you know, agriculture is a huge part of, of that community. And, um, and once you, uh, once you're from that community, it's, it's, you're, you're kind of always tied to it, even though I, I live about seven hours away from it right now. Um, you know, I still frequent it. But what was kind of interesting is uh, I, I came to London, Ontario, and got into commodities and uh, corn, beans, and wheat, and uh, spent a lot of time in uh, the ag markets, um, working for different organizations and in sales. 
But again, going back to my roots, I uh, oh, a few years ago uh, reconnected with one of my my friends from back home, and he started a, a company in um, uh, in industrial hemp uh, back when it was first legalized, and um, and I kind of got interested in hemp and what it stands for, what it's all about, and. Uh, we're a pretty conservative area where I'm from. And so it was kind of the, what are you doing? Is this hemp or is it marijuana or what is it? And we, you know, we still battle that a little bit to this day. Um, but just, uh, really fell in love with the, um, just the, the whole, uh, scope of what hemp is and what it can be used for and the different uses of it. Uh, but then also, what it can do for the environment and, and that whole side of it. And about a year and a half ago, um, I was able to, uh, there was a, an opening, a position to come into the, the Uniseed family and uh, came in. And then now I'm, uh, I'm the general manager for, for Uniseed. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of neat, a uh, lot of neat stories and, and learning and, ventures along the way so yeah. yeah your background to get into this a little bit you used to do a little commodity uh, exchange commodity, you know, yeah brokerage kind of thing yeah that's right so i i was uh, a research analyst so i studied the corn beans and wheat markets and um provided advice on on those uh those markets to uh canadian uh farmers um and then got into kind of more uh, sales and, and got into, uh, helping farmers be more profitable basically at the end of the day. So, um, so how that relates to hemp is, is, um, maybe at some time we'll, we'll see, uh, you know, hemp grain traded on the, the Chicago board of trade. I don't know, oh, but, yeah. uh, we, we might get there at some point And I think that would be pretty interesting. And I mean, you got lumber, you got a lot of these different you know, natural resources that are traded. And um, I, I don't see why there isn't any, uh, why down the road we couldn't do something similar to industrial hemp. And, and uh, I think that- Well, I think once it's grown, you know, once we get this into where we can use this for livestock feed, which is, it's, yeah. you know, step by step, we're getting there with that. Game on. Um, yeah, this is going to be a regular commodity, just like corn, just like soybeans, any of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is. Um, yeah. Certainly, uh, we be a rotational that. crop. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's exactly what what I think. I you know, um, I see it, and uh, I think you know, down the road we we could get there. There's there's some interesting uh, comments about carbon offsets as well that that have been floating around and mm -hmm. and trading of them. So. Uh, I think the many of your farmers hand. up there uh, up where you're at, um, are they getting into the carbon market? Are many of them making contracts yet? Or is it still one of those? You know, we're kind of like we're trying to figure it out. Yeah, yet. still trying to figure things out. And um, there's there's some really interesting uh, companies near us uh, that, that are doing some really interesting things regarding carbon sequestering and doing some studies on but it's more on the machinery aspect of it and not necessarily on the plant genetic side of things uh, where I would, what I'm really interested in uh, as well is looking at the cellular level and can different genetics uh, are different genetics more, uh, more efficient in carbon sequestering uh, are some genetics. Is there a variation between you know different hemp genetics um and then can we uh can we actually quantify that and uh would that have to do with like the tap root length you know things like that do you measure yeah so like a lot of this stuff is just really early on and, and nobody's really come up even with a, a system for testing like uh we're still trying to figure out you know what is the protocols for for this um and then who's going to do it and who's going to be involved and um so yeah like farmers are interested in it up here um but they've been interested like we've heard carbon sequestering for a number of years 
But I think what's a little bit different this time around is that we're starting to see government really uh, crack down. And, uh, you know, we got carbon taxes up here now. And um, I think the, the, the longer uh, that goes on for, um, I think that's going to, industry's eventually going to turn and say, hey, listen, why don't we make investments into, you know, um, other resources and, and so carbon have, taxes is that yeah. industries being taxed for the carbon not farmers but industry no farmer farmers are, uh, as well yep oh really farmers are as well so you know like they'll be like if you get diesel showing up on your farm um there'll be a certain portion of that will be a carbon tax and then you also have to pay HST on, on that carbon tax as well. So, um, so you're kind of getting double tax, but it's, uh, yeah, that's, so I think that's where I think from the government side of things, that's where we're going to, uh, we're going to see some changes. Um, and you know, a lot of corporations are in Canada now, um, are starting to lean towards more of a social or more of an event environmentally, you know, responsible company and uh, have a have a division that is you know towards sustainability and and hemp fits a lot of those parameters. So, yeah. Are, are you doing cover crops or no till? Some of those uh, regenerative ag models. Yeah, for sure we are. Yeah, we uh, and again, depending on where you are in the country. Um, some of those things are more prevalent than other in other geographies, but yeah, uh, in Southwestern Ontario, um, we're starting to get more into cover crops, uh, starting to get more into no-till, um, yeah, as, as much as possible. Now there's still, um, uh, we get, we get, you know, there's some, there's some other issues in Southwestern Ontario as well, that, that kind of helps. The, the no-till helps in that and cup crops help in that. There's soil erosion and there's a lot of other problems. So um, yeah, eventually we'll we'll get there. And, and, you know, there's some people out there that are looking at possibly doing some industrial hemp for, for cover crops. And um, I don't know, I don't have too much information on that at this point, but um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of interesting stuff that, could be coming down the pipe. Right? Something in our we were talking a little bit before the show about uh, you found some you found some interesting stuff in rotation with mm -hmm. rotation. Yeah. So, um, and again, a lot of this stuff is anecdotal. It's not like we're we're. Um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to to do the research into this and. Um, as a seed genetic company, we want, uh, we, we need, before we can market anything, we, we have to have solid proof, right? So, uh, but we have seen some positive um, uh, developments with uh, even in potato rotations, uh, some potato farmers. Um, there's rumors that some pretty big potato manufacturers in Canada are looking at industrial hemp uh, as a rotational crop right now. Um, and there's, uh, you know, it, it can break up disease cycles. It can break up some, uh, some other insects. Uh, so it, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now you do quite a bit with um, some of the seed genetics there a little bit. So let's talk about, I always like to throw this in there too, up front, and we'll talk about it a couple more times. But Mark, if people want to get a hold of you and find out more about what your company has to offer, um, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you and do that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, best way would be to go to the website. So it's uniseeds.ca and, uh, and you can contact us through, through the website. Um, or you can email me directly. It's Mark, M-A-R-K-L at uniseeds.ca. So U-N-I-S-E-E-D-S.ca. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, uh, we're, we're open to lots of interesting uh, discussions and a lot of people out there with really interesting projects. And, and uh, that's one thing that we're really, uh, we're all really focused on at UniSeed is, is how do we get 
the maximum out of this crop. And, and if somebody out there has a, an excellent idea or, or something that's a little bit out of the box, well, uh, we're always interested to, uh, to look at that and see how we can help. So, yeah. Um, so the farmers that you're selling the grains, or actually your seeds going for both grain and fiber, correct? You have both varieties? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Now you talked a little bit about some exciting things that are happening in your area with some industry and going on. So help us out there. Cause that's, that's the biggest thing we're trying to get going, you know, even in the States here is the same thing. Right. You know? right. Yeah. And it's, and it's something that is taken a long time. Like um, again, it doesn't happen overnight and I'm still young in it and I'm still very bullish in hemp. And, and uh, sometimes I'm around people that have been in it a while and they're, they're like, well, you know, you're, you're still pretty young in it. So, <laughs> but it's pretty, it's been legal in Canada for how long? Yeah. Since 98, but it's, I would say we're on the cusp in Canada of, of changing pretty dramatically. And, um, you know, we, we've had the CBD boom and bust. Um, but now where I see it, and at UNIC where we see that industrial hemp market long-term is in grain and fiber varieties. Um, it's gonna come down to uh, grains and fibers, decortications, competition, uh, and it's gonna come down to uh, um, industry backing it, but then also government as well. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I was out in Alberta uh, which is uh, one of our Western provinces. Um, and I was at a, at a seminar out there. And um, I would say Alberta is, is probably the, the most advanced uh, in the promotion of industrial hemp in Canada. Um, and it's right from, you know, the provincial government right down to individual municipalities, um, there is tremendous support for industrial hemp. And they, they, you know, historically have been an oil producing province uh, and, and that has gone through some hardships and they're, they're looking at, you know, well, what, what can we, how can we bring some of that economy back? And, uh, and industrial hemp isn't going to be the savior, but, but it could be, uh, part of, part of that solution. Oh, another and, tool in the toolbox, right? I mean, yeah, not, that's right. Only one thing is, is, is a silver bullet, you know, we've yeah. a lesson, that's for sure. Speaking of that's tools, right. how many, how many decorticators do you guys have in Canada? Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you that. Um, like there's, there's, there's probably a handful of, of large scale ones. And then there's, there, there are people that, that do have processes set up in their, you know, their barn or whatever. And, and they do, you know, a couple of bales every now and then. But as for large scale commercial op- uh, operations, you're probably looking at, you know, a handful to, you know, six to a dozen really. So not, not, not too much. Um, but, but the whole idea in Alberta is that there would be, uh, eventually decorticators like there would be grain elevators. And so farmers would have options to, you know, uh, to uh, present their, their, their straw to, to multiple different um, uh, firms. So um, we'll see, like this is, again, long-term plans and, and there are some mobile decorticator companies out there right now. Um, but still it's, it's about efficiency, right. And, and does it, does it pencil out, you know, to do that? Um, but as for, as for, uh, you know, in in the Western provinces, um, hemp, you know, uh, performs really well out there, uh, at the, at the Northern latitudes as well. They have, you know, in the summertime extended daylight hours. So it, it, for, for fiber and, and fiber processing, it, it's an excellent solution for them. So that's really why they're gravitating it and uh, why we're seeing some 
massive investments in Alberta um, over the next few years. So, yeah. So your farmers, when they you know buy the seed from you, whether it be for grain or fiber, um, do they have, have they got it already sold? Have they got a contract for it? Are there buyers up in your area that are buying it? Uh, yeah, so some, some do. Um, and we, we suggest that, you know, uh, if you are buying industrial hemp or you're buying seed from us, that you have a game plan for, um, you know, the product. Um, there's, there are, you know, about a handful too grain um, companies in, in Canada that are buying industrial hemp for human consumption. So there are some markets, but uh, at the same time too, um, you know, their, their criteria of what they're looking for, uh, for uh, their quality control, um, you got to make sure that you meet that. Otherwise, there's a huge difference going from, you know, human consumption into into secondary markets, right? So it's it's uh, you know we basically got human consumption in bird seed markets. So yeah. So you're not able to feed to uh, cattle or chicken or pigs or any anything. No, at this time we're not. Um, I I think at this point there is some um, there are some opportunities maybe for animals or pets that are not not for human consumption so you know dogs and cats and that sort of thing there there are some products out there uh where hemp is in some of those uh those feed but as for you know livestock that's going for human consumption at this point no we we can't do that um is is part of that i wonder if part of that concern is the way that would be processed and that you would have extra leaf material and such and and overall you might have some cannabinoids in the process where you can buy hemp hearts but those those hemp hearts imagine like you were saying the quality control it's going to be really finely screened and, and then they they knock the shells off so you're ended up your end product is devoid of any type of cannabinoids through the system is that you think that yeah the rub is from what I understand, yeah, is is they're they're looking at studies, you know, how much cannabinoids is, is left in an animal, uh, will that be transferred into human, um, and and looking at, you know, kind of going through, you know, through the the let's say for instance the cattle eating it, and and then going through the dairy operation while. Well, is there anything that remains from that in milk, industrial in hemp in? Whatever, yeah. yeah, exactly. And the I think eggs, that's kind the of the, chicken, yeah. yeah, I think that's the main sticker. And, but now in saying that, um, we, and when I say we, um, uh, CHDA, Canadian Hemp Trade Alliance, uh, in conjunction with some universities and uh, they have, I believe formally, uh, formally uh, submitted at this point uh, an application into the government, uh, but I, I still believe we're probably a year to two years away from anything being done as far as legalizing it. Um, well, once you, know, I, you know, I was on a, a, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but I was out in the hemp open spaces yesterday and Hunter Buffington was on there from the uh, Feed Coalition and um, you know, it sounds like there's some pretty good progress being made on the on the uh, on the uh, chicken and poultry uh, side for things. But um, um, mm-hmm. now, you also mentioned kind of before the show that there's some manufacturing going on. Somebody's making some door panels and stuff out of this product as well. Yeah, that's right. So um, yeah, just you know, recently we've uh, uh, we've uh, there's been some press releases. And some uh, some companies that are expanding into Alberta, um, Inca uh, is one of those companies, and Blue Sky Hemp Ventures is another uh, that are are looking at setting up uh, two different plants. Um, uh, I think one's seventy five million, roughly. They're both roughly around the same, so one hundred and fifty million in total. Um, and I know Inca right now is has they've been advertising that they have 
contracts with Toyota and Winnebago. And um, I believe there's a couple of other companies as well where they're uh, taking industrial hemp and uh, making a, a door panels and, and panels for inside RVs and bio panels. And um, so there is some real uh, interesting um, uh, work being done. And like I say, like this is, um, and I think this is where the industry is going to really grow is when all levels of government, all levels of industry get together and work together, because it's very clear that um, when this company wanted to set up shop, um, government um, and, and even mayors of, of, of cities got involved in the recruiting process and, and they want that industry there. And, uh, you know, it's a green industry and it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an industry that's attracting a lot of investment right now. So it, it bodes well for everybody. And, uh, and so, uh, so Blue Sky, I, they, they kind of made a little bit of a, uh, of a, a deal and, and I think Blue Sky is, is going to be doing, um, uh, using part of the plant in, in southern Alberta and then shipping the straw to a northern plant in, in uh, well, uh, central but north central Alberta uh, for the, for the, uh, the, the panels and, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Mark, so, for your growers to grow, um, now you said you also that you have some outlets that people can get your seed through the in the U.S. already? Yeah. So right now we we're with uh, Horizon Hemp uh, out of South Dakota and they distribute in the, the West and Midwest uh, and Seedway on the East Coast. So um, Seedway is uh, is again a, a seed retailer and um, they carry our varieties as well. So um, this year has been pretty crazy and it's uh, uh, sales have uh, have been pretty strong and I, I, I think we're we're starting to see maybe a, a change of tide coming and uh, hopefully it can continue. Now what what type of you know this is for fiber and grain right the seeds? Yeah so all our seeds so going back a little bit to who we are and what we're all about here is um, we hey, maybe you can bring up that website. Yeah, so we are, um, we focus on industrial uh, hemp, obviously, but the grain and fiber varieties. We do carry some varieties uh, for high CBD uh, that we basically are just a distributor for. But the varieties that we do have and carry, um, we uh, either have in conjunction with uh, other breeders have, have played a part in, in bringing these genetics to market. Or uh, we, we recently have got Silesia out of uh, Alberta Innovates with Jan Salaski that uh, we got the rights, the global rights for, for it. And it's a fiber variety. So we're very, um, uh, all our varieties are monoecious varieties. And we are um, really looking at uh, cleaning having a as clean as field as possible so when i say a clean field we we really uh uh a shareholder of our of, of uni seed is is a, a seed breeding company and genetics company and um they do a very very good job of of, of making sure that you know the seed that you get uh is consistent uh it's going to perform well and that the field is extremely clean and, and uh, uh, manageability is, is, is excellent. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. We're starting to see like those monoecious varieties, like hemp, hemp by itself is a dioecious, you know, crop. And we're, uh, um, we're really starting to see, um, especially with, with, with our genetics, uh, that they're very consistent when it comes to the time for harvest. Um, you know, they're relatively all the same height and it's, it's, it's a clean field. There's, there's no real rogue male plants out there that are going to be, you know, causing any problems. And um, yeah, 
they they perform very well. So um, I'm assuming your crop um, is a 100 day, 90 day kind of window for to harvest maturity. Yeah, that's right. So the majority of them are around 100 to you know 110, 120 day, um, and um, so we have we have a number of different varieties. So Anka is our kind of our our pioneer variety, and it's our variety that that we've got started with, and it is uh, it would be what we would consider our fiber variety. Uh, it's you know, uh, depending on conditions, it, it can go anywhere from, you know, uh, eight to 10, 11 feet tall. And depending on, on you know, planting conditions and so on. Um, what, what kind of yield per acre? That's a fiber or grain variety? Yeah, that's, so that's a fiber variety. So here in, uh, here in South or in uh, Eastern Canada, we, we go by hectares and, and kilograms but i'll uh, i'll try my best oh, to uh, convert here for you so you know um, a long time ago when i went yeah. to school right we were going to switch over to the metric system and we never did yeah. i don't know why but yes yeah, so. yeah so we're seeing here around um about 7600 uh 7600 uh kilograms per hectare so that would be just under that so it would be just about about 75 thousand pounds per acre roughly of straw if i have a number trait so yeah so it'll be just a little bit less than that 7500 or so uh, pounds um so it's uh 7500 so pounds right 75 yeah 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 100 not thousand yeah that's like no wow, that's right that's like, holy yeah. cow that's a lot of tons <laughs> No, that that would be uh, that would be pretty impressive. Um, I don't know how you ever get a har harvester through that. Yeah, about yeah, that's just, right. Just under four tons, yeah, three to four tons. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about the, the the equipment a little later than in the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, uh, speaking of that, actually, we we it's it's time for our uh, break to thank our sponsors, uh, but I want to leave us with a little little teaser. And because I want to ask you about this, Mark. So this is what I hear a lot of farmers talking about is that they're getting the short end of the stick generally. So I, I want to ask you when we get back from the break, how we get to this, where, where the mm -hmm. uh, producers are, are making the cheese. So yeah. that's what we want, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, Blaine, you want to jump into what, what do we have going on? It's just a couple days from now, isn't it? Yeah, not too long. Um, less than 20 or 15 days until um, we have the uh, the expo coming up. Um, yeah. Still time to register and get your uh, tickets to come. Again, a great lineup of speakers. We, we invited uh, the cannabis side and it's on the medical side this year. So we're talking about the power of hemp and cannabis is what we're talking about this year. Um, and there's the agenda. You can go on. You can see the agenda that we have set up. You can see the speakers that we have set up. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, if you we, still, uh, uh, we still have time, um, if you want to get a, a, an entry in for the hempy, if you make something out of industrial hemp, whether it be CBD, whether it be a, a construction product, whether it be bedding, whether it be um, just anything made out with the, with industrial hemp, you can still get in for the hempies award. Mm -hmm. uh, great way to uh, promote your product and, and a little fun that evening. Uh, we're gonna have a little, we're gonna have a DJ playing too doing that. So you can get your tickets for that. Uh, and if you don't can make anything else, you can come that day and, and attend that. So mm -hmm. it'll be a lot of fun. And we want to, we want everybody to come and enjoy and, and learn about this. This is where the magic happens, folks, is at these at these uh, at these expos. And you know, we can try to do things online as best we can. But you really uh, the face to face meeting and face to face talk is where a lot of this really happens. And, and you get to make new friends. Um, you know, yesterday, um, I want to give a shout out to Hemp Open Spaces. I was on that yesterday. Um, and what a fun, fun thing they had there. They had over 60 people. I think they had over 22 countries, I think, were represented on that yesterday. Um, got to meet some new friends. Got to meet a new friend from um, the Netherlands that is making, um, if I remember right, they're making um, baby, it's a wipe that they spray for baby uh, bottoms and, 
and um, diapers and stuff. So just some all, all kinds of interesting products that were coming out there with that. So, no, uh, so that. yeah, so that's coming up. And um, go ahead, Dave. Nothing. <laughs> Bad comment. Go ahead. You're doing oh, you were trying to make a comment. Yeah, I, I was thinking I wanted the contact information. I might need that later. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, bad joke. Name is Steel. That's all I'll tell you there. But we got that information. But Hemp Taste will be coming up. They're going to have another one. They haven't set a date yet for that. But uh, if you got the chance, it'd be a great thing to jump on that. Uh, meet a bunch of new friends there. So the same thing will happen at the expo. You're going to get a chance to, to make new friends and meet new friends there. So uh, one of the big things uh, that I want to that we're going to be doing is on Thursday. Now this is before the opening on Friday. Uh, we have an opportunity, and we have a, a Peter Nielsen is going to be hosting a, a training class on how to get third party audit or things you need to do for third party audits. Um, it's coming, folks. This is a, a food product that we're using one way or another. We're ingesting it. We're putting it in food, we're putting it in gummies, we're putting it in tinctures and oils. Um, and so where there's going to be some compliance that's going to come and you, and you might as well be on the board. Plus, you'll be able to market your product as being third party audited, which is a great thing to do. Um, so that's a, a great opportunity. Uh, if you're an IHAB member, you can get it for $200. Um, and uh, Peter Nielsen is going to be doing that. That's a Thursday before. And then Thursday night is a networking event that we'll have at the Radisson. That's free for anybody to attend on that as well. So uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Dave, you've got something coming up you're going to be going to. Now, last weekend, we had the Hemp Creek Workshop where we built a doghouse. I don't know if you've got any pictures to show on that day, but that'd be cool. Uh, but then you're going to be going to an event next Saturday, if I remember right. Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, carnival at Grow Green. Yeah, Grow uh, Green's... Man, we, we use that space for the Hempcrete event, and I, I met I was able to meet the owner, and he's like, oh, I'm not the owner, it's a community, and this is all, you know, I mean, he's really supportive, and it's a nice, big location, good space, so, um, yeah, I don't have pictures queued up, but, uh, okay. well, but that's yeah, nice. that, that'll be a Grow Green in Whitmore Lake. Uh, and we'll have the uh, doghouse at the event. Uh, we're going to do a little fundraiser for that. Um, um, uh, right now, um, Hemp Today, uh, if you haven't, uh, if you don't get that a digital newsletter, you really should sign up for that. Kurt does a great job of getting information out. And um, one of the things I want to tie back into that is um, yesterday he put out a nice article and there's five companies that have been targeted with the, with the first FDA warnings over the Delta 8 THC products. Um, again, they're making claims there. Uh, that are unsubstantiated and you just got to be a compliance folks you can't say that this stuff can do stuff that hasn't been proven uh, either scientifically or backed up with with research to be able to show that it does these things so uh, again if you're thinking about or you do a cbd products or anything else uh, make sure that you're in compliance with those please uh, don't get yourself in trouble by, by making claims that just aren't aren't there to be able to back up yeah. uh, uh, the Hempress uh, texted me something. I looked it up. Uh, Joe Brown wanted us to share the. Um, oh Michigan yeah, Hemp great! Festival. I was going to mention that a little bit later, but that's great. Yeah, eighth annual blessing that's coming up August twenty seventh. So it, it's good to see some events coming back. Finally, we're crawling out of COVID, and we can. This one's this one's kind of unique. This this little festival is kind of unique. Um, Molly Mott's going to be there, and uh, Director Bisbo from the CRA is going to be there as well. But it's also a fishing contest for uh, for for youth. So there's yeah, blessing. It starts at twelve. Um, oh, and, uh, our buddy Eric Anderson will be there. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be talking about some things there. Um, and uh, they're going to be, like I say, that, that 4.30 to 6.30, they've got the first annual hemp fishing contest for children 18 and under. So, um, and here's something I learned the other day, Dave. If I go there and take my grandkids, we might actually be trying to use the hemp protein, the, 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 what we have from the cake after we make the oil. Oh, yeah. um, there is a lot of, there's some, so some back research and some research that this is actually a pretty good uh, bait to use wow. for fish. I, I, I have a comment on that actually oh yeah mark yeah so um yeah like apparently if you uh if you want to go down the rabbit hole of youtube uh you can uh <laughs> there's some uh i i think like in europe they they've done stuff like this for a while anyway uh this past summer at the cottage i cooked some hemp oil and i dipped my plastic baits uh like before I would cast them, I would dip them into into this oil, 
and uh anyway i, I it uh yeah it, it kind of had a good day yeah it wasn't too bad and but what what was really interesting is like when you drop your lure into the the water there's there's kind of that oily foam uh or not really a foam but that oily substance on yeah. the top of the water vegetable oil yep and you know not what petroleum. Like, let's make sure there's not petroleum but vegetable oil yeah mm-hmm. so that stuff there the the fish would be up rolling like they would just come right up and they would roll around on on the surface of the water so there you go you'll have to try that one out so there you go so so you're saying that the hemp seed oil that's kind of what you use is the hemp seed oil yeah yeah yeah. hey look at there dave another i love it yeah pretty neat all right, wheels are turning. So you'll have to. Uh, we have to make a. Yeah. We have to make a contest out of Joe's if some you know using <laughs> hemp seed or some kind of hemp um, product to catch the fish versus one that don't see who catches the most fish. I'm gonna try That'd it in my pond good. later. I'm curious to see it. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> see what the fish like. So um, one of the things I bring up, Mike uh, Brennan, when he's on here, um, he normally talks a little bit about the dark side, about the cannabis side. And I did want to mention this because this is kind of an interesting thing that uh, where um, the uh, legal recreational and medical cannabis sales in 2001 um, actually um, were higher than uh, Starbucks, believe it or not. Um, and one of the things that is interesting is, and this is globally now, this just isn't just Michigan, right? Um, here, but this is just, uh, this is cannabis sales versus the other industries. Uh, it's actually was higher than the global, global opiate market. With oh, wow. We're finally beating them. Yay. Uh, well, and then a better product. We know that there's not oh, many yeah. side effects with using well, that product. Damage. Right? Um, and we're half the sales of, uh, of cigarettes. So... So it's interesting where that's going. Just thought we'd throw that out there for the. On, on that side. Are, are you seeing any hemp cigarette brands in Canada, Mark? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I'm sure there are. I I I don't smoke myself, so I don't really know. So yeah. um, and we yeah. have Blaze and a few others here in the U.S. We okay, but uh. Yeah, it's int- I was just thinking about that whole cigarette market. It's like, man, that'd be so much healthier for people to just smoke hemp cigarettes than cigarettes. Right. right. Yeah, I I, uh, I would suspect there is, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So Dave, you had that teaser question. Why don't we jump back in with Mark? Unless you've got anything oh, yeah, else yeah. to share. So, how did, you know, so this chart, I, I saw this on your site, and it really caught my eye because, you know, I, I'm new into the farming agriculture world real and uh you know just a few years and um this is the complaint i hear all the time is that the the farmers get the short end of the the whole the whole their portion of <laughs> the the income stream is is small so here we go you know how do we get to that you know where the producer makes a fair wage right right um so this is so one thing i i'll bring up too when discussing this is like right now we're at a time where commodity prices are record record levels right like 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 we have seen commodity prices at, at crazy levels but if you go out and you ask a farmer are they netting any more money in their in their wallet or are they about the same like is that ratio changed or is it still the same okay so even though commodity prices are extremely high right now are farmers that extra money is it coming back to farmers and and a lot of farmers that that we have talked to no that's not necessarily the case um that because what else is really high right now? Fertilizer prices. Yeah, all their input costs went up. Their yeah. input prices. Uh, land if prices get right it. now yeah. are gone uh, gone crazy. So, so even though we see really strong uh, commodity prices, it doesn't necessarily equate to more money being made on the farm. Our philosophy is providing good genetics excellent genetics that 
we have some genetics that are uh, Altair and Vega that are that we would consider a true dual purpose crop. Um, so, and we try our hardest to get, and it's tough. And I know there's going to be some people out there rolling their eyes, uh, mm -hmm. talking about you know dual purpose yeah. uh, crops because it's, it is tough. Uh, you you can talk to, you know. Uh, the top fiber processors and they they don't want anything to do with grain because as soon as uh, the hemp s starts to set seed, um, maybe they lose that quality. Um, and so, so we want to get the farmers uh, in a position okay, where they are able to market their crops in such a way um, that they, they're able to create their own value and their own deals. Um, that there might be, you know, a couple of different options for the grain. There might be a couple of different options for the fiber. There might be some options uh, with even uh, seed genetics and, and um, uh, taking on maybe maybe becoming a, a seed dealer for us. So there's a lot of different ways in which we try and get that farmer uh, through our genetics and through kind of our corporate um, uh, philosophy, trying to get as much value to them as possible. And at the end of the day, put them in control of where they can market their crops. You know, um, there's, you know, we have people uh, that are in, in Quebec, shipping seed to Manitoba, um, which is, you know, <laughs> uh, quite a long piece, like, um, to get there, but, but it makes sense. It still pencils out because, um, because what they're taking home, uh, is, is great. And, um, uh, and, you know, eventually down the road, we want to get into a situation where some of these farmers can capitalize too on, on maybe the carbon market. And, and that would be an extra layer of revenue for them as well. So. Are, are there sources? Um, so Mark, go ahead, go ahead, Dave. Well, I, I was curious, you know, because I, I see people looking for hemp herd, yep. you know, for hemp creek camp applications, different things, you know, animal bedding. Uh, do you have sources for hemp herd? Yeah, for sure. There's, there's, there's a few here in, in Canada. Um, Probably the largest uh, in in Canada, arguably one of the largest in Canada would be Canadian uh, Rockies Hemp Corporation there in uh, uh, Bruderheim, Alberta. Um, excellent company uh, that we we deal with on a regular basis, um, and they uh, they're shipping stuff all over the place, and and Ooh. actually a lot of the stuff that. A lot of the stuff that we actually do process in Canada comes south of the border. So, um, and uh, you guys have some pretty interesting companies south of the border as well. Um, that that you know, uh, I'm pretty interested in as well. There's uh, hemp wood, and uh, mm -hmm. you see all this stuff that's Great. pretty yep. interesting. That's what this is behind me. That's yeah. It. So that's <laughs> like that's that's pretty interesting stuff and uh, um, pretty uh, pretty cool. Um, we have another company out there too that's doing some pretty interesting stuff, Fast Fiber Technologies, and they just purchased a plant in, I think it's North Carolina as well, uh, but they're in the industrial wipes space right now, but eventually they want to get into uh, baby wipes and that sort of stuff um, as far as being biodegradable and uh, possibly even flushable because uh, at mm -hmm. this point, baby wipes are not, so yeah. It's pretty cool. interesting and and that stuff like that 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 fiber that's the high-end fiber that i was talking about earlier where um like that that would come from a separate uh production line as as you heard but it's still uh uh a lot of these companies are are doing multiple different you know uh processes in in one facility um there's a there's a handful of other ones but uh like inca uh, that I mentioned earlier, there'll be another one that we'll be uh, processing at some point in, in the next few years. Um, and then there's some smaller, smaller scale 
uh, individuals that, that do it, you know, where they'll take, you know, uh, a load of bales every once in a while and, and they'll be packaging it and selling it uh, just for somebody to make hemp free. But it's not like if you go to them and you want to do a subdivision, they don't have that capacity to do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Right. Mark, yes. we've talked about this with other growers up there too. Let's talk about it. Talk about input and cost and everything. Um, so what does it cost for you as a seed person to be able to handle the seed? Is there a cost that you have to pay to be able to do that and handle that? To the yeah. Um, as far as licensing goes, there's no real cost. Um, we got to submit an application and wait and they'll uh they do their background checks and all that fun stuff and and it's really just paperwork um as far as as being as uh like part of the canadian seed growers like yeah there's there's different costs that are involved in in different agencies and and getting different approvals but as far as if i want to go out and i want to grow industrial hemp tomorrow let's say um I basically have to fill out some paperwork, uh, get the okay from the government, and then I can do it. And there's no cost in that. Are there limitations, number of farmers per um, county? I don't know how you guys work up there, counties or states? Not, Probably. not that I'm aware of. And if somebody out there can correct me, that would be great. But uh, I am not aware of that. Okay. Um, and it's... Uh, yeah. Have you seen the number of hemp growers? Uh, what, you know, cause you started in 98. So what's that curve been like, you know? Yeah, it's been fluctuating and there has been, um, there was a real boom and, you know, like everybody, um, when something new comes onto the marketplace, everybody's going to grow it and everybody's going to get rich. But the, the <laughs> economics behind that, that doesn't really, yeah. yeah, the economics behind that doesn't really work, right? So, um, so yeah, we did have a boom and a bust, and there were there's a lot of people out there that, that still have a bad taste of of hemp in their mouth because basically expectations weren't met and. And we're very upfront and honest with people about expectations. If they're buying seed from us, like, like it's not something you're going to get rich at overnight. <laughs> and it's something that, that serves a purpose. And it's something that, mm -hmm. you know, you can get behind uh, a movement as well, but it's, um, um, if you're going to, you know, uh, plant our varieties and, and think, or plant anybody's varieties. Um, like there's, there was people out here that would spend a million dollars on seed for high CBD. And then like, they have no processing contract in place. And it's like, you know, you can't, you can't do that. Right. So, um, so that, that has, that has kind of gone away. And now the people that are left in the business are, are what I would consider like diehard hemp people um and that they like it for rotation they like it because of what it represents and, and what it means um but it's actually kind of interesting i was just talking to a company just not too long ago about organic acres and they um they contract a lot of acres in in manitoba and this company said that uh they are losing organic acres in, in the western provinces because because there's not that price differentiating between the conventional and the organics anymore, like there used to be. And uh, because the, the prices are, are so high and, and- You're talking about hemp now, right? Yeah, so, so it's uh, like, price. why why continue going through that, all the rigmarole being organic if, um, you know, the prices aren't that different. Um, now, that being said, still in Ontario and Quebec, we're still seeing a premium um for organics and and um uh, uh, but it's i i thought that was interesting as well yeah yeah because normally it's like 50 cents for conventional and like a dollar 20 dollar 25 for organic usually yeah yeah usually yeah it, and it's uh it, well it's still there's still quite a difference in the industrial hemp uh for the difference 
I, I was referring to um, oh, like traditional crops, traditional crops. Oh, so okay. like somebody that somebody that had like maybe uh, a 1200 acre organic operation and maybe, you know, 200 acres was industrial hemp. Well, in switching all their acreage over to conventional uh, or back to conventional, uh, because the majority of their crops, there isn't that much different uh, separation. So they're losing, losing that on the hemp side as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, here in the States, this kind of come up traditional crops here and probably the same with the hemp too, but um, are, are you finding the same problem? Are your farmers finding the same problem up there by trying to get inputs? I'm trying to actually buy them, the fertilizer, um, chemicals, things like that. Are you having that same problem in the supply chain as well? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, depending on where you are, your, your geography, uh, can be challenging for sure. Um, but farmers are, farmers are fairly resourceful and, um, but yes, I would say, uh, we're having similar challenges here. Yeah. Yeah. So Mark, let's talk, talk in about how people can get a hold of you and find out more about your product and your genetics and stuff. Let's yeah. let people know about that. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, you can jump on our website, uh, uniseeds.ca. Uh, you can, uh, you can find my contact information on the website. Uh, if you're in the Midwest, you can get a hold of Horizon Hemp, uh, and, and they can, uh, they can help you with the genetics. Uh, if you're on the East coast Seedway, reach out to Seedway and, uh, and they can uh, get you in contact with, uh, with our genetics as well. So, um, we got, uh, a handful of different genetics um, that the bold well in, in your geography, all these genetics were bred in, uh, in, in Ontario, except for Silesia that was, uh, that was developed in, in Western Canada. Uh, but they, each one of these genetics would grow uh, no problem in at your latitude and, and in your, your climate. It's, it's very similar to what we have here. So, Great. Yeah. Well, Mark, we want to thank you very much for uh, your yeah, time so today. Much, yeah, no problem. Have, people will be able to find you at the expo, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we plan on coming down and being down there for for the show, and uh, yeah, stop by the booth and say hi, and uh, uh, we can uh, we can get you set up. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, we'll stick around. We've got uh, a recipe next. Do you have any news you you want? You know, just a little bit of stuff I want to share a little bit um, that's coming up uh, and some some events that are coming up. So um, one thing that's uh, uh, happening uh, is Building Man World Hemp Alliance Hempcrete Workshop on May 5 and 8. Um, I know that's happening right now, but um, that's in, uh, in Green River, Utah is where that's at. Um, also coming up... Uh, is going to be um, um, the Pennsylvania Hemp Festival that's in Kershey, Pennsylvania on July 30th. And then of course the Southern Hemp Expo is coming up August 18th and 20th. Um, so good events coming up there. And I, I, I gotta give a handout to Pennsylvania. I'm hoping that our state will look at what the state of Pennsylvania is doing to drive this uh, hemp industry and what the support they're giving there. So we hope that happens there for sure on that. Um, let's see. And then, um, you know, today is kind of a special day. Uh, of course, this week has a couple special days in it. Um, for those that didn't know, but yesterday was Star Wars Day. Uh, May, the May the 4th, 4th be Earth. with you. Um, so if you missed that day, um, a, lot of, a lot of great pictures. Eric McKee posted a great one. I got to find out where he was. He must have been at Disney, but he had one with all his kids somewhere. So that was a pretty good one on that. Um, and then today is Cinco de Mayo Day. Yeah. So um, uh, if you uh, like margaritas, that'd be a great day for that. But the other thing that we have is the guacamole uh, dip that we did. Um, really simple, easy recipe um, on that. And if my lovely assistant, my wife is hearing me, she could, we actually made some for today. Yeah, if she oh. can bring that in, we can actually show it. But so we've got uh, it's very simple. You got two large ripe avocados. Uh, two tablespoons of fresh lime or lime juice, two medium tomatoes cut into small dices, uh, half a cup of minced uh, shallots or red onions, one clove of fresh garlic, 
a half a cup of shelled hemp seeds, a half to two, three, two thirds teaspoons of sea salt, and one to teaspoons of minced uh, cilantro. Uh, you peel the avocados, place them in a bowl, and you mix all the other stuff in until it's uh, all nice and mixed up. And you get your favorite crackers or cheese spread, or cheese crackers. Um, or whatever you like to eat guacamole on. Uh, some people like to eat it on everything. So that's not a problem either. Easier, easy, it's, it's that way. This is from the Hemp Nut Cookbook. We like to give credit where credit's due on that one. Uh, and it makes about two cups, this does. And a pretty easy, pretty quick recipe. So very cool. Enjoy your Cinco de Mayo day, folks. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, you know, some the day, you know what I didn't do? <laughs> I didn't put on my hemp my, my hat. hat. I forgot to put on my chef hat for that one. So there we go. <laughs> There you yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. And Go that around. is a uh, a hemp hempers hat. This is hemp, this is hemp material. That's right. Hemp fabric is how uh, that's made out of. So, Pretty good. So, Mark, again, want to thank you very much for uh, taking your time out of your day to uh, to help us uh, inform the public and all the growers out there about what's happening uh, with uh, Uni Seed and what they can provide and uh, kind of what's happening all over the world with hemp. So, yeah. Awesome. I no, I appreciate it. Thank you guys. And uh, we'll talk soon. See you soon. All right. Peace and love. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next weekend or next week, um, we're going to have uh, Robin and uh, Hannah with Canopy USA is going to be on. And we're going to talk a little bit about their seeds as well. But one of the interesting things we're going to talk about with them is going to be what's going on in the European over there and check to talk that they're using it uh, for what they're doing for feed products over there. Um, and also what they're doing for their fiber, too. So a great show next week with them. All right. Thanks, Blake. All right. See you.